Okay, that's not the normal set, but uh, welcome everyone to my basement office. It's going to have to do for the next little while as we're still stuck in quarantine for the time being. This week is going to be a little bit different than the last couple of videos as we focus more on the data around your live stream, around your online presence, instead of just the technical stuff that we've been focusing on recently. This video is the first in a three part series about understanding your new online congregation. I've spoken with a lot of pastors that get done with their Facebook or their YouTube live stream and they go and they look at the analytics at the end of the video and they want to know which one of the hundreds of numbers that seem to be visible is their actual attendance. The short answer to that question is none of them. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. Now, let's go into the long answer. We're gonna be focusing on Facebook and YouTube today. I know there are other streaming platforms available, but 90% of churches are using these platforms, so that's what we're gonna focus on. First up, let's look at Facebook. If you head into the details of any video after it's finished streaming, you get a list of statistics next to the video. Funny enough, none of these say church attendance because Facebook wasn't designed to track church attendance. An issue you realize really quickly is that we kind of have to take a little bit of guessing, a little bit of liberty as to how to calculate or really estimate how many people were actually watching and engaged throughout the service. Let's talk about first how Facebook calculates a view. If you look at your insights, you'll see a few different kinds of views, a three second view, a 10 second view, and a one minute view. A three second view is someone who has watched your stream for at least three seconds. A 10 second view is the same for 10 seconds and a minute view is the same for a minute. Now, I don't know about your church specifically, but if someone walked into the sanctuary for three seconds and then walked out, I don't know if I would count them as an attendee, though I'm sure we all know a couple churches that might. That is not the topic of this conversation. Arguably, I would say the same for 10 seconds or even a 60 second viewer. Most of those viewers are people who are scrolling by in their newsfeed, catch a glimpse of the service, stick around for a minute, whatever, get bored, and then keep moving on their day. It's not bad to have that kind of interaction. People stepping in for any amount of time is not a bad thing. But if you're trying to figure out what your attendance is, I don't think that's an honest way of doing it. In addition, you want to stay away from the estimated reach number. It's easy to get caught up on how big that number is, but it's important that you know what it actually is because it's not as exciting as it sounds. A reach in marketing language is what we call an impression. It's a single set of eyeballs on your stream at one time. That means I could literally whip past the video on my newsfeed and as long as it shows up for one quarter of a second, we've reached that person. To me, that's the equivalent of counting people driving by your church on a Sunday morning. Again, not an honest way of doing it. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a large reach. It's just not the most important number you want to be focusing on. If you want the most accurate definition, in my opinion, of how many people were engaged and watching throughout the service, you're going to want to be looking at the peak live viewers. Peak live viewers is exactly what it sounds like. It's at one point in time, the maximum amount of people that were watching together. That being said, it's important to note that peak live viewers are actually peak live devices, not people. More often than not, people are watching together, either couples or families or friends gathered around a TV or a phone or a computer or whatever. Unfortunately, there's not like a great formula that churches have come up with to know for every device how many people are actually watching. That usually fluctuates on a church by church basis. There's not an industry standard yet. I would argue even that there shouldn't be, that church cultures are different and the makeup of which of families or single people or couples is different. You know your church body better than I do, so it's important you take the makeup of your congregation into mind when trying to estimate for every device how many people were actually watching. Now let's talk about YouTube. Fortunately, the kind of analytics that YouTube and Facebook provide are relatively similar. If you're looking for a general attendance number, peak live viewer still makes sense to run off here. You also might want to consider taking into effect playbacks. Chances are, after you go live on Sunday, your video is immediately available for people to watch whenever they want. Would you and should you count the views post Sunday morning to your attendance? that kind of depends. It's up to you. I think so, but that's kind of a matter of an opinion at this point. I hope you didn't click into this looking for definitive answers on any of this information because there just isn't a standard really for counting a church attendance with these numbers. That being said, I think there's an argument to be made that those numbers aren't really the most important numbers to begin with. As I've said before in previous videos, the medium of a live stream 
and a Sunday morning service are completely different mediums. Success for one will look very different than another. For a typical Sunday morning service, knowing the attendance of your congregation is really helpful to know how many people heard the word, how many people got saved. These are the kinds of numbers that we're used to tracking on a weekly basis. However, now that we're talking about an online environment, the amount of overall viewers isn't anywhere near as important as what we in the online world call engagement. Engagement is the conversation happening back in the other direction towards you. It's your like it's your comments, and it's your shares. These types of interactions are the currency of online success, and these are the sorts of things that we should be aiming for when putting together our streams. In essence, we're talking about a quality over quantity type of approach. A like, a comment, or a share shows you that someone thought the content that you were creating was important enough, was valuable enough, was, was exciting enough to not only just digest, but to show to other people, to, to validate, to bring to the world in a new kind of way. Liking is a simple seal of approval. A comment is a desire to connect with other people who are surrounding the same sort of content. A share is the ultimate form of engagement. It's telling the entirety of my social circle that they need to check out this thing that I have found. That's what we're aiming for here. That's how you push the needle in the social media world. The more Facebook sees that your content is being engaged with, likes, comments, and shares, the more it pushes that content to new people. Engaging posts spread organically. Engaging posts create more engagement. So if you're trying to track the success of your services on a week by week basis, I would say it's not a bad thing to try to track or, or estimate your attendance, but I would focus much more on the likes and the comments and shares that you get on a week to week basis. The really exciting thing about tracking engagement instead of just viewers and attendance is that engagement isn't limited to Sunday morning. We we can be pushing out content throughout the week that is engaging people, reminding them of not only your church, but the gospel, the story of what you're saying. Building up that momentum, that engagement throughout the week is going to have an impact not only on your current audience, but it's going to spread organically to people around them. Again, this is, in my opinion, a new form, a 21st century form of evangelism. And that just excites me to no end. The next video, which if you're watching on the day of upload, will be out tomorrow. We're going to talk about how to engage our audiences throughout the week, not just on a Sunday morning. Because although our live streams are very important, engaging our audience using every tool that we have available to us is how we can be light and salt in this time. It's easy to get caught up in only improving your Sunday morning experience, your Sunday live stream. I would say if there's any bad thing that has come from all these churches jumping to a new online live streaming environment so quickly, it's that it's now easier than ever to compare to the church down the street, to the big church in the country. It's very easy and natural to feel small and envious of other churches' success or even production value. Now that we don't have to drive to one church on Sunday and another church on another, we can view them on the same screen. For church people, I know how hard it is to get into that comparing game and how hard it is to break free of that. To me, breaking that cycle means understanding what your unique, goal and purpose is as the body of Christ in your community. What do the people down your street need? Not the people in Reading or the people in the other street over. What does your community need? Build that into your live stream. Build that into the content you release every week. That's how you're going to make an impact in your world. I'm not in any way saying that production value isn't important. I'm saying that it's much less important than you being effective at sharing the gospel with the people around you. Thanks so much for watching today's episode of Black Bar. If you haven't checked it out already, I highly suggest checking out the Black Bar podcast. It releases every single week. We have some new exciting content coming out to help with this new season, but be sure to check that out. We already got a lot of good content up. If you have any difficulties getting set up with your live stream or coming up with a social media plan, check out the Black Bar Discord. I'm there, the rest of the Black Bar team there, and we have literally hundreds of church media people and pastors working together, helping build the body of Christ stronger. We are all in this together. Lastly, make sure to like this video, to subscribe, and stay tuned for the rest of this week as we learn how to engage and grow our online audience.